الله أكبر الله أكبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم My brothers and sisters, I pray you are all well and you're managing this pandemic. Despite all the challenges, you're relying on Allah and you are having your full faith. Inshallah, one day this will be over. We all make dua that Allah makes it easy for all of us and enables us to find cure for this pandemic has caused a lot of problem for many of us. May Allah make it easy, may Allah give us cure, may Allah strengthen us in our Iman, in our tawakkul, and our abilities to find the solution. Today, I want to read a hadith to you that I came across only a few days ago. And it will be a very quick reflection on that hadith for all of us. Rasulullah said, whoever has the following three qualities will have completed their faith. Number one, being fair to others. Number two, offering peace to the world. And number three, spending in charity even while poor. Very simple three things. If you have them inside you, those qualities, you've completed your faith. Subhanallah. To complete our faith, to become close to Allah, it doesn't take much. It requires a conscious effort and a few changes in our lifestyle, in our mindset, in our behavior, in our priorities. Number one, be fair. Number two, offer peace to the world. And number three, give charity even when you are poor. Let me explain these things. Number one, being fair to others. Brothers and sisters, that is the cornerstone of my faith. This is my faith. Honoring all human beings, regardless of their social, economic, political, spiritual, racial, or gender status. Treating all human beings as equal, deserving of, deserving of honor and dignity. Equal in the sense that they're all children of Adam. Allah has made them all with inherent right to be treated well. We're all born free. Nobody has the right to take our freedom away. Being fair means treating others like I would like to be treated myself. Being fair means giving them what is their due proportion. What is fair to them? What is their rightful due? It's called being fair. Being fair to myself, being fair to my family, my children, my wife, my husband, my father, my mother, my fellow human beings, my brothers, my sisters, my neighbors. Being fair to everybody and everything. Being fair to the animals, being fair to the plants around, being fair to this world, the environment. Being fair is a comprehensive concept in Islam. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, we all have to assess ourselves and ask with our hands on our heart, how often are we being fair to ourselves and people around? If we want to complete our faith, we have to be fair to people around us. Being fair to people around us while it may seem quite threatening to some people, actually it isn't. It is to treat everybody the way you would like to be treated. Actually, that's the bottom line to being fair. In the Quran, we find the order of fairness and justice repeating itself with the word adl and qist and insaf, as we know, appears in traditions of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, all indicating to one thing. Fairness and justice is the paramount, foremost principle and the defining factor of Islamic lifestyle. Muslims are inherently fair people. When I stand in my prayer, I think about my brother standing next to me. I think about the person standing next to me, thinking, have I taken too much space? Am I disturbing the other person? Is my body smelling of things that are foul and disturbing to the person next to me? Have I brushed my teeth so that I don't inconvenience the person next to me? Remember, these are the examples of our Prophet Muhammad 
who used to say you should brush your teeth every time you stand before prayer. Just before you stand for prayer, brush your teeth so that your breath would be fresh and it won't be stale and disturbing to the person next to you. There is a reason for it. Come to the mosque with clean clothes. There is a reason for it. Come to the clothes. Come to the mosque with fresh clothes. There is a reason for it. You don't have to wear expensive clothes. You just have to be fresh and clean. Wear nice perfume that doesn't disturb other people. So that your body odor doesn't overwhelm other people. SubhanAllah. These are fairness of how we treat each other while we are praying. Being fair is the foremost principle of Islam. Life is too short, my brothers and sisters, to hold in our hearts grudges and resentment. If I have been unfair to somebody, and if you are at the receiving end of, un of my unfair treatment, please tell me, so that I can behave, so that I can correct myself, so that I can mend my way, I can apologize to you. If I've done something wrong inadvertently, unintentionally, and it's hurt you, and you have felt that I've treated you unfairly, tell me about it. So I can come and apologize to you. I can make up for things that I may have done unknowingly. Brothers and sisters, being fair equals my right to be told if I've treated you unfairly. And if you go to sleep with all the grudges in your heart, all the resentments in your mind, you are the only one who is going to suffer. In a short space of time that Allah has given all of us a life within which we have to make the best. Brothers and sisters, if somebody has hurt you, if somebody has been unfair to you, tell them nicely and privately. Tell them and remind them and give them an opportunity to be able to seek your forgiveness. And once they've asked you for forgiveness, forgive them. In fact, it is even higher virtue if you forgive them, even if they don't ask you for forgiveness. Fairness requires conscious effort on both sides. I have to be fair to you, and if I've been unfair to you, tell me, so I can ask you to forgive me. If you don't want to forgive me, that's okay too. As long as we don't live with resentment, recrimination, as long as we don't live with grudges in our heart, we are fine. So, treating one another fairly actually enables you to live in peace, enables you to live without grudges and resentment, enables you to live with the others with love and mercy and compassion. That's why if you have fairness in your heart and if you deal with one another fairly, you have actually one element of your faith completed. Subhanallah. That's why Allah says, I'dilu taqwa, be just. That is the closest you can ever be to Allah consciousness. Number two, offering peace to the world. This is the essence of my faith, my brothers and sisters. This is the purpose of my existence. The name of my faith is Islam, means peace. Name of my Lord is as salam the source of all peace. Name of my paradise that Allah has promised is Dar as salam abode of peace. My daily greeting to one another is as salamu alaykum, may peace be upon you. My life is all about submitting to peace. And if you want to complete your faith, it's not just submitting to faith, the peaceful lifestyle that you have promised, but it is to share and offer to the world peace. No hostility, no fights, no arguments, no violence, no wars. Remember in Islam, war could be a necessity and you may have to go to an ethical war to avert greater harm and for justice and protection of life. Yes, but that is not the norm. That is an exception. The norm is peace. We must pursue a peaceful life and that's what the norm is. Whether you like it or not, your religion is all about living in peace. Existing, coexisting in a peaceful way. Remember this. Ufshu salama baynakum, Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith, spread peace between yourselves. My brothers and sisters, when you come to me and say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, what are you saying? You're saying to me, brother, I come here with peace. I come here with no intention of malice. I come here with no intention of harming you. I come here with an olive branch. I come here with an invitation for a brotherly, sisterly, harmonious, peaceful, calm, tranquil relationship. I come here to seeking the best, not the worst.
That's what salamu alaykum means, literally. When you say salamu alaykum to somebody, you're disarming that person, you're disarming yourself. You're sending a message of peace to the other person. Remember, if we are true to our faith, we should be spreading peace everywhere. We should be offering peace everywhere. Not just by words, but by action too. If I say salamu alaykum to you and then start arguing about something with you. If I say salamu alaykum and then immediately I turn around and start backbiting or slandering. If I say salamu alaykum and then immediately start lying and, and you know causing trouble. If I say salamu alaykum and if I do all sorts of evil then there is no meaning to my salam. It's an empty hollow word. If you mean salamu alaykum then live with it. Live the true meaning of salam. May Allah's peace be upon you. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This must manifest itself in our life with our neighbors, with our families, with our friends, with our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, our children, our wives, our husbands. Everybody should be enjoying our peace because we are offering peace to the world. Some people claim to be peaceful, but they're fighting with their husbands or their wives at home all the time. Some people claim to be peaceful, but they're often quarreling with their children. Some people claim to be peaceful, but they're at war with their neighbors over the smallest and the most frivolous thing. Brothers and sisters, this is not an example of being at peace or offering peace to the world. It's sad that many non-Muslims think Muslims are the most unpeaceful people on the face of this earth, causing havoc for everybody. That's what some people think, and that's very sad. It's a shame that people think that about Muslims. We need to change that as soon as possible. And the only way we can bring about any change, my brothers and sisters, is if we truly, if we truly, in words and in our action, offer the world peace. My brothers and sisters, contentment of my heart can only be attained through peace. My soul is at ease when I'm at peace. My heart is not racing fast when I'm at peace. My goal and my means and my end are all about peace. In fact, I can't even find Allah without submitting to peace, without accepting Allah as the source of all peace. Brothers and sisters, my tranquility, my serenity, all of this are only possible when I embrace peace. I'm at peace when I'm free from distress and anxiety. I'm at peace when I am free from worry and fear. I'm at peace when I am building relationships and reconciliation with other people. I live the will of God and Allah Azza wa Jal is the only one who has given us a clarity in our life about what it means to live Allah's will. I am only living Allah's will when I'm totally surrendering and being content with Allah, the source of all peace. And finally, giving charity, spending charity, even when you are poor. This is a unique pleasure that nothing else can give you or replace it for you. Giving away your money and your wealth gives you a unique pleasure that hoarding money and wealth never can give. You make as much money as you want, my brothers and sisters. But tell me the truth. How many items of food can you eat? A plate of food and then you're full. Can you eat any more? No. How much money do you need? Has anyone ever gone to their graves with their money? No. How many bathrooms can you use at any one time? Only one. How many beds can you sleep on at any one time? Only one. How many cars can you drive at any one time? Only one. Why do you need so much? Why do you need so much? And if you do need so much, something is wrong. Greed is destructive. But charity is not only constructive, but purifying of my my wealth and my soul. Charity gives you contentment from within that you can never find in stockpiling your wealth and acquiring more and more material possession. My brothers and sisters, this illusion of material possession is driving all of us to the point of insanity. Allah says, this world is an illusion, this life is an illusion. This life is like a mirage. People are chasing material. They're vying with one another to show off how much money they have, how many properties that they have, how many children they have. These constant competition are only a mirage, an illusion. 
إنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو الله says in the Quran surely this life is as if it's like a play an amusement but it isn't actually it is an illusion when you give away charity your illusion is broken when you give away charity your wealth isn't reduced when you give away your charity your money hard earned cash you don't expect anything in return from the people who have received the money but you give it away because you know your inner satisfaction will only be possible when you have shared the goodness of what you have. Sharing and caring demonstrates that you're a real human, whereas if you are selfish and greedy, it demonstrates your animal side, and that's not something that any one of us likes. So give away in charity, whatever you have. Give away your charity because it will, it will destroy your ego. Give away your charity for it will Take away your selfishness. Give away in charity for it will purify your wealth. Give away your money that you've earned because it will make your future more secure. Some people think hoarding money will make my life more secure. This can't be any farther than the truth. Money can never make your life secure or the future secure. What makes your life secure is how much you give away. Rasulullah said to Aisha, O oh Aisha, the sheep that we slaughtered the other day, how much meat do you have left at home? Aisha said, Ya yeah, Rasulullah, nothing. We have nothing left except the shoulder that we had kept to eat. Prophet said, Ah, O oh Aisha, that's a wrong statement you made. We have everything that we've given away as ours waiting for us in the hereafter. The shoulder that you kept, or the leg that you kept of the sheep, actually is only going to be eaten by us. We will not find the benefit of it in the hereafter. Give away what you have. Especially give away when you're poor. You know, brothers and sisters, my experience of fundraising for over 30 years has taught me something profound. And that is poorest people give more than those who are rich. Rich ones are tighter. They give less. They're constantly guarding their wealth, fortifying their wealth. But the poor give away readily. And they're the ones who have fulfilled their faith more readily than the rich ones. Even when you're poor, give, because Allah will give you more. Give with smile on your face. Give with happiness in your heart. Don't hold back, but give. Give for giving in the cause of Allah. Allah says, Allah will give you in return. Spend on my servant. Allah says, if you spend on my servants, or my servant, I will spend on you. Subhanallah. It is an encouragement to give. So three things will fulfill our faith. Number one, be fair to everybody around you. Number two, we were saying, offering the world peace. And number three, giving charity even when you are poor. Does that sound too much? Some people complicate our faith. It doesn't take that much for you to become closer to Allah. A bit of sacrifice. A bit of being real and authentic. Being just and fair. Spreading peace on this earth, offering the world peace, giving charity, three simple things. And yet they are the ones, Rasulullah has said, if you have them, you've fulfilled your faith. SubhanAllah. What are you waiting for, brothers and sisters? What are you waiting for? Don't wait any longer. Fulfill your faith by doing these three things regularly. Be mindful of how fair you are. Put your hand on your heart and say to yourself, I am fair. If you can't, then there is something that you need to do. And ask yourself, am I being peaceful? And am I offering the world peace? If the answer is yes, alhamdulillah, do more. If the answer is no, then you need to do something about it. And ask yourself, am I giving in charity to the poor and the needy of the world, even when I need it? When, even when I need it most? If you are giving away in charity, then you are. You have fulfilled your faith. I'll tell you, finally, a small story. My father-in-law passed away a long time ago. May Allah have mercy on his soul. He was so generous, I still remember. A beggar by the street one day asked my father-in-law, can you give me some money, please? You know what he did? He gave him some money. Actually, he put his hand in his pocket and he found no money. He looked at the beggar and the beggar was wearing a torn shirt. My father-in-law took his shirt off. He was wearing a vest and it was cold. He took his shirt off. He gave the shirt to the beggar saying, I don't have any money, but you can have my shirt. He came home wearing just a vest. And when his family asked, where is your shirt? He said, I gave it away in charity. A beggar was asking, I gave it to him. That's the type of soul we need. 
My father-in-law was not rich. In fact, he was not even a Muslim. But he had a heart of the most generous man I've ever come across. So fairness, peace, and kindness. Three important qualities that will make you fulfill your faith. May Allah make it possible for us to fulfill our faith. May Allah make us more fair. May Allah make us more peaceful. And may Allah make us more generous. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.